Hello and welcome to Who Gives a Shit. Watch part one first, and if you have, let's go right into this. Amongst the republics of Yugoslavia, by far the most diverse was Bosnia and Herzegovina. I'm just going to call it Bosnia. It consisted of Croats, Serbs, and by a slim majority, Bosniak Muslims. As Yugoslavia fell, Bosnia found its own parliament divided across these ethnic lines. When talks of separation began in October 91, the Bosnian Serb, Radovan Karadzic, issued a stern warning to the parliament, a warning of a war they wouldn't win, a war that would see Bosniak extinction. The Bosnian Serbs held a preemptive referendum of their own and declared a state by January 92, the Republic of Srpska. Its goal was to remain in a common state with Serbia and Montenegro. Bosnia regarded that referendum unconstitutional and had another that the Serbs boycotted. It passed, but with only 63% turnout. With independence declared in March, the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia officially ended in April. Now it was the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. Completely different. In all honesty though, it was a rump state, no longer claiming certain republics. The independence declaration, combined with the targeting of Serbs by Bosnian Green Berets, caused Srpska to declare their independence and begin shelling and securing areas of the capital, Sarajevo. In a move of support, all Bosnian Serbs were transferred from the Yugoslav army to the control of Karadzic's right-hand man, Ratko Mladic. This bolstered Srpska's rank and left Bosnian President Alija Izbegovic with very few ways to fight back. The siege of Sarajevo was a stalemate, but in the bigger picture, Bosnian Serbs were making major gains. Bosnian Croats began to eye up territory as well, seeking to emulate the Serbs. The war was characterised by brutality, soldiers and civilians were targeted alike, as it was no war of armies, but ethnicities. Ethnic cleansing, prisoner abuse and the massacres and mass rapes of civilians were committed by all sides. Try to excuse my lack of nuance here, I know you won't, but come on, please. The violence also drove certain people to radicalise. Serb and Croat identities became points of significance, and some former secular Bosniaks began to turn to jihad. The sheer spectacle of complete disregard of human life had shocked Europe, and so when UN General Philippe Morion arrived in the Bosnian enclave of Srebrenica in May 93, he was desperately pressured by the people of the town to pledge his protection, and so rather hastily pledged it. The UN would attempt to wheel this back a bit, pledging instead that they would deter attacks to selected Bosnian enclaves. Now with these inconvenient obligations, they felt they must put an end to the war. The Vans Owen plan was proposed to divide Bosnia into ethnic provinces. The Bosnian Serbs would lose a fraction of its gains, however it would solidify them. Kadajic did not see it this way though, and rejected it, much to Milosevic's disapproval. Regardless, the Croats would compromise when Tujman made peace with his Begovic. Croatia needed the Western support. Bosnian Serbs continued to fight, but their blatant shelling of civilians in Sarajevo drew unwanted attention. In early 94, NATO demanded they withdraw their heavy weapons from the hills in 10 days. Not only did this irritate the Bosnian Serbs, but also Russia, who saw NATO was overlooking their assessment. Yeltsin would contact Kadajic, asking that he accept the ultimatum, and in return, Russian soldiers would enter the area. Kadajic quickly accepted. Mladic, however, took a petty revenge by attacking a UN safe area. The UN struck back with its first ever airstrike in history, and then Mladic took UN soldiers hostage. This was an epiphany to the Bosnian Serbs, they realised UN resolve was a bluff. They stormed Srebrenica in July 95, massacring the people as the UN did nothing. NATO knew it would have to reassert Western power and did so with very convincing airstrikes. Croatians too came out in force. A new proper army reclaimed lost territory and exiled the Serbs from their homes of centuries. Those that wouldn't or couldn't leave died in the fires of their homes. It became clear the Bosnian Serbs could not endure and so Milosevic demanded the negotiation powers of Srpska on threat of economically crippling the Republic. He got his way. After this, Milosevic, Tudjman and Izbegovic were invited to Ohio to negotiate peace. A peace that would see a unified Bosnia of two separate legal entities, Bosnia and Herzegovina and the Republic of Srpska. Many disagreements nearly caused deadlock, the most contentious being on the splitting of Sarajevo. Eventually Milosevic cracked and told Izbegovic, you deserve Sarajevo because you fought for it and those cowards killed you from the hills. Peace was achieved December 14th, 1995. The accused war criminals of Kadajic and Mladic fled, the former even disguising himself as an expert on alternative medicine. They would, however, eventually see their day in court. Or rather, years. Peace would not come so quickly though. Some still had bones to pick, as the wars would end where they began. Kosovo. After their autonomy was quashed, Milosevic's programs to re-enfranchise Kosovar Serbs led to the active oppression of Kosovar Albanians. 
The Kosovo Liberation Army, formed 1991, was officially recognised by the US as a terrorist organisation. Given the US's new opinion of Serbia, however, they were quite happy to work with the KLA. Milosevic became president of Yugoslavia in 97, and the KLA responded with attacks on police stations and army posts. Using arms supplied from Albania and moral justification from the West, they were quite successful. In 98, when Milosevic began to crack down hard on this, he and paramilitaries killed almost 2,000 KLA and civilians combined. NATO was not up to do this again, and quickly responded with a massive bombing campaign in Kosovo and Yugoslavia in 1999. Bombs are not discreet though, and given the civilian loss of life and never having the approval of the UN, the bombing campaign's justification is heavily debated to this day. It did eventually force Milosevic to sign off on the Kumanovo Agreement in June 99, Yugoslav troops would withdraw from Kosovo and be replaced with UN soldiers. In April 2001, Milosevic was arrested on charges of corruption. Under US pressure, the Yugoslav government was forced to extradite him. Soon after, in 2003, Yugoslavia officially died, changing from the Federal Assembly of Yugoslavia to a state of union between Serbia and Montenegro. And not too long after that, Montenegro, in a narrow referendum, separated from Serbia in 2006. In 2008, Kosovo too declared a dubious independence. Currently contested, it could be the source of future conflict. Sure hope not though, I'd have to update this video. All in all, the former Yugoslavia has quite the well-earned legacy. Every time this video was suggested, it started its own mini shitstorm. Today, the six independent republics can be rather nice places to live though the seventh sometimes independent one is still fairly poor. The people that live there remain somewhat divided in opinion, from ultranationalists to owning a Tito body pillow, though I think all can agree the wars were pretty bad. It's a shame to have ended what was a fairly impressive country with genocide, massacres, rape, the unpleasant stuff, and that stuff is the stuff that sticks. In the end, after many lives were lost and many tales were created, we got a fairly decent meme out of it. <laughs> And as always, as always, I'd like to thank the patrons. Personal mentions to Anal Scrubs, yes I know his name is rude, Steve Graham, Zedfer, Thrace Vega, and Grandpa Hex. And no, just because I did this doesn't mean if you scream loud enough I'll do any video. It's if you pay enough. Come on people, keep up. Toodles.